hello, hello, everyone. Happy Friday. Woo -woo. Let me see if it'll actually show up this time. We did pretty good. I just did a live at five and everything worked perfect. Um, no fuzziness or anything. So let's see if it's working this time. It looks good. Yay! I don't see I don't see it going in and out. Hi Suzanne. Give me just a second. I got my good shirt on. I don't have my paint shirt on, so it's always a good excuse though to get new clothes. <laughs> okay, today uh, you are joining me on the DIY paint page, so please make sure you like the page. And I'm actually stepping in for a good friend for um, New Hampshire, Michelle from Serendipity House. So uh, she's checking her daughter into college and getting her all moved in. And so I took her slot for her and we are gonna be creating a pumpkin transformation. Um, I am Susan with The Withered Barn in Homedale, Idaho. Hi, April, sunny California. It is sunny and hot here today. It's like 94 and I can literally chuck a rock into the cornfield and so that, oh, my allergies are horrible today, but they're at least not running anymore. So that, that's good news. Hi, Becky. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly get this pumpkin painted. This is a paper mache pumpkin. It's not small. It's like nine and a half inches. It's a good size pumpkin. And I grabbed these from Hobby Lobby. If you're lucky enough to see them, they're gonna be gone. So if you wanna do this project, you have to snag them. You can get these smaller ones at Michael's. Um, Target had some, but uh, not a huge selection. But you can also do this same thing on um, a styrofoam pumpkin or one of the craft pumpkins. It's just those, pla uh, the, like the spongy craft pumpkins are more expensive. These are $9. And when you get them half off, you get a coupon. You can't pass that up for how big these are and how much detail is on them. So I'm gonna quickly get it painted and I'm gonna paint it with white swan because I gotta make sure this is dry. And uh, thank you for saying hello and sharing the love. We all appreciate that. Let me grab a, brush and I think I'm at the bottom of my jar so it's getting a little thick um, we'll just work with it I don't have my water with me but I do want to make sure this is good and dry so I'm going to get that done first and this is just white swan DIY paint should dry pretty quick because this is right onto the paper A lot of paints will just soak up, and I've noticed DIY paint doesn't. It literally it will sit on the top like it should and cover. Hi, Michelle. Hello from New Mexico. Hi, Beth. What are you guys' plans this weekend? I remember the days when I could say, ooh, I don't know what I'm gonna do this weekend. Not anymore. I don't know if that's an age thing, a responsibility thing, but it seems like I don't have lately the luxury of saying, what do I wanna do this weekend? We're trying to get as much as we can done. This is really a sheddy brush. Hmm. Not, sh not the other word, sheddy. <laughs> Um, but we've got so much going on with our farm and the pumpkin patch and trying to get, um, we've got vendors coming out, so we've got sawdust going out um, and being watered right now to keep dust and stuff down. Our pumpkins are getting big. Some of them are turning orange. They were a little late for some reason. not 
going to really worry about the bottom so much because this is just for me and it's if I was going to do this as a project to um, sell at a craft market or something I would definitely make sure my bottom was finished hi is it Coet? that's a beautiful name Amarillo, Texas. I used to live in um, Edinburgh, Texas at the bottom tip and El Paso, Texas. We moved around quite a bit. My dad um, was a roadmaster for Southern Pacific before they merged with UP Railroad. See, I told you this is a sheddy brush. Since I'm getting down to the bottom of my paint, little tip, add water to it, mix it around, and just keep right on using it. It just gets a little thick when you get to the bottom. Mine do anyways, I don't know about your guys's. Mine gets a little thick to the bottom because it dries out just a little bit. You just add your water to reactivate it. Okay, this is looking good. I'm gonna get this under the dryer. If you guys have, um, Watch me before, you know, I'm getting a, um, my husband's building me a drying room so that we don't have to listen to those <laughs> blow dryers the whole time. I'm going to stick it in the door and shut it so you guys don't hear it. Okay, not going to worry about the bottom. Oh, well, maybe I'll paint the top though. I do want to do this because I've got a little sparkly surprise I want to add on here too. vintagey rusticness of this. Look at it. Isn't that pretty? So this is vintage swan, or vintage swan, white swan to give me a vintagey look. This is the first part. Stacy, yes, this is um, DIY paint white swan. And I'm kind of at the bottom. So my tends to thicken up because I, I leave the lid off so much when I'm working on things and then close it. So when I get down to here, it's a little thicker and it's about time to add some water to it and rehydrate it. So I'm going to set that aside. Let me move this. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do. Take your edges with some painter's tape. 
before rolling it back up. But I use mine up pretty quickly. So I'm going to stick that back in here. And this is what I do. I use a marker and I write an X. And then I know that it's a partial transfer. Um, where's my leg? Right there. I don't want any dust and debris getting in there. So I'm going to close it back up. I'm going to set this aside for right now. That dried pretty quick. So, it's a little bit, this is what I, this is what I tell everybody. When you're putting your transfers on, this is clay based, right? So you get that, that grittiness, that chalkiness, and that's like debris. So it's like dust. So you've got to kind of, test your your surface before putting on your iod transfer sometimes your surface is a, awesome it's perfect and it, you don't get quite as much of that clay texture on your fingers and you can apply your transfer directly on it then seal it but this particular one i am feeling a little bit of the of the dust so i'm going to go ahead and do my seal first dry then apply the transfer and I am actually going to use uh, this one. I'm going to be using um, the clear liquid patina. And I'm going to just put a light, light coat. And hopefully <laughs> this brush doesn't shed as much, but we'll see. Like I said, I'm just doing a light coat. And this will help seal that clay chalkiness so that my transfer goes on good. You can see I'm barely putting any on here. It's just enough to kind of wet the surface and give me a little tiny bit of a top coat. And I'm not putting my transfer towards the bottom. I'm only going to go up on this top, so I don't need to worry about um, sealing the bottom yet. Why waste my liquid patina, right? Okay. Let me close this up. I'm going to use that on something else in just a second while this is drying. Okay.
Okay. I'm going to use this as my glue. Denise, the transfer I'm using is classic bouquets. And I'm not going to use it as a whole. I'm going to use it just for the, um, the contrast of the pumpkin, the white with the black. I'm just painting some liquid patina onto my leaf. And it's going to act like my glue. And I'll uh, post the um, afterwards, the affiliate link to purchase the DIY page as well as this. Watch. Girls gotta love some sparkle. Look at this. This is authentic German glass glitter. Okay? So I'm not gonna squish my fingers together when I'm doing this because I don't want little shards of glass. This is not kids glitter, this is adult glitter. So I'm going to just finally... Oh, let me put a plate under this because I want to be able to... Oh, there's a fly in here. I want to be able to see... Liquid patina works perfect for this. I can hurry, it's drying. Look at this shimmer. Crazy, crazy shimmer. So we'll get this ready while that's drying. And I'm just kind of jiggling it around. So look at that. Isn't that pretty? Oh, every time I see it, I love it. Let me put that back in the box or in the jar. I don't want to waste any of it. And the German glass glitter just gives it a little bit of a higher quality. Isn't that pretty? Okay, I'm going to set that aside. This is still dry and I want to make sure it's going to dry. Okay. Let's see if this works. Put it back on the stand. So I'm just feeling it to see if it feels cold in spots because that means. <laughs> Hi, Kim! <laughs> I do have the glitter at the store. Um, I'm getting some more in. I just ordered some more because I only have one jar of each color. But it's so pretty. So all I'm going to do is just feel, make sure you guys know if, if you have any cold spots, that means it's not dry all the way. But it feels pretty good. So this is what I'm going to do. So we started out with our paper mache pumpkin. We added white swan, DIY paint white swan. And then we did our leaf. It's already pretty just like this, right? But we're gonna go a step. No, it's a paper mache, Veronica. It's um, paper, not ceramic. So it's really lightweight, easy to, to maneuver. Um, I get them at Hobby Lobby. But when you see them, you need to snag them because they won't be there long. So we're going to take our, our white pumpkin and take it a step further with an IOD transfer. So I'm trying to figure out where to cut it because I'm just going to use bits and pieces is what I'm going to do. I'm a 
contrast girl. I love black and white contrast, blues and copper contrast. So that's what I'm doing. And I think I'm gonna go one step further, cut it down even more. All I'm doing is cutting this up so I can place it how I want on here. I'm just making sure my protective backing stays in place. Okay, I like this. Okay, I've cut it down into several pieces now. going to need a little bit more. I don't want the label on this one, so I'm going to leave the label over here. But I think I want, I want this whole section. Um, the classic bouquets comes, uh, it has four different floral motifs on it that are approximately 11 by 14, I think, each. I'm gonna use this flower too, but I'm gonna cut that off separate. Okay. So nobody says you gotta use the entire thing. I'm gonna set this piece aside too. So let's just start with this. So I'm gonna start with this one. If you guys would, be sure to like the page, DIY Paint page. Visit the Withered Barn our Facebook page and give us a like there and a, and a follow. And um, also share. We love it when you share. Okay, so I'm gonna put this right here. Now this is gonna be a little trickier than on a flat surface and, and that's why it's so much easier to cut it up. Would it work on foam pumpkins? Kathy, you, it's gonna be your painted surface. So your foam pumpkin, you can certainly paint. DIY paint will work great. Just seal it first. You'll just have to be careful rubbing so you don't poke a hole in it. But you can do it on the foam pumpkins too. It's just the, the um, foam ones, well, the, not the foam, the craft pumpkins like they sell at um, Hobby Lobby, the larger ones, are too expensive, I think. It was like $19. So these paper mache ones are only $9.99 if you can find it. So you just make sure you don't um, lift your fingers up, this finger, because of these curved surfaces. It's just a little trickier, but it can be done. You just take your time and wiggle around over each fold. If one direction doesn't release, you can kind of see how it looks kind of opaque. Hi Elaine. Hi Carrie. Northern California. Where at in Northern California? We lived there for a couple of years. And I went to school in Northern California, actually. Part of my high school. Sorry, I turned that so you guys can't see. <laughs> so if it doesn't release one direction, I go another direction. You don't have to press hard. And if it's not releasing, it could be your um, top coat. back over a little bit. Okay. That looks good so far. 
You can hear my paper crinkling. Hi, Beth. Michelle, how are you guys doing? On fabulous Farmtastic Fridays. Oop, there we go. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So I'm going to just go over it with my fingers and make sure my edges are down. No air bubbles, it feels really good. And I'm going to work my way around. I'm actually gonna cut this one up smaller too because it's a little easier using it in smaller pieces on your pumpkin. Just because of the, the grooves and everything. And I may, I don't know if we'll have enough time to put all of them on there, but I will definitely make sure I get a shot of it and post that as well for you guys to see a finished project. Because you guys don't want to sit here and watch me rub on these for an hour. I want to show you what else I have planned for it. And uh, the DIY liquid patina, you can use that as a, um, a medium to do like the, the tissue paper decoupaging. You can do the same thing. It works perfect for that too. I have to watch myself like I'm going oh 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 when I'm doing this. You know, like people do with scissors in their mouth, guys. <laughs> Beth, it's hot as hell. It's hot here too for Idaho. It's hot. It was 94 or 95. So there's the next one. If you get some that don't go down immediately, just use your fingers and kind of use your finger as like a little buffing pad. So I'm gonna set these aside. I'll finish these because I wanna finish the pumpkin for you guys. And I will post the picture. Um, so now I wanted to, I had to remember, ooh, I almost shook it with the lid off, guys. What a disaster that would have been. Okay, so this is another liquid patina. It's Golden Ticket. So it's a metallic, and it's sheer. Let me dry that off a little bit. I am going to just really offload some of this because I only want like a little bit. And it'll actually dry a little lighter than this. And I'm going to put this on like this. I know you're thinking, oh my gosh, you're covering it up. But no, I'm not. Watch. I'm going to take my cloth and I'm going to drag it. Do it while it's still wet. And I'm, I'm using cheesecloth. I use cheesecloth on everything. Yeah, a little more. Again, this is DIY Golden Ticket. More. And I'm kind of using it kind of like a glaze. I'm 
until I get just the right amount of color I want from my gold. I want it to look kind of vintagey, almost uh, like a like an old gold. Okay. That looks good. So now I'm going to take a little bit more of my gold. I should have used a smaller brush, but that's okay. I'm going to add some more of the glitter because girls can't have too much glitter. Let me get this out of the way so my glitter doesn't fall in it. Again, a little more of the German glass glitter. Don't wiggle your fingers. And I just want a hint. I don't want to go overboard with the glitter. Because then it can look too crafty. And I'm putting it right where I put the golden ticket. Because it's going to act like my glue. Okay, I'm going to tap it off. There's my top. Isn't that pretty? And now we're going to add, and I'll finish adding a little bit more of this um, black transfer around it. But like I said, for the sake of time, you guys don't need to sit and watch me rub that transfer on the whole time. So I'm just going to bend my leaf wire. around my stem and pull it around and I will dab a little piece of hot glue on there just to keep it in that spot well maybe I will okay let me just do that real fast my glue gun won't reach guys <laughs> okay And then this will dry solid too. Isn't that pretty? And I can tell you, no one else will have your pumpkin. Isn't it beautiful? Can you imagine doing this same technique on like the paper mache Christmas trees? Ideas, ideas, inspirations, right? So there it is. I will, like I said, post a final photo with the rest of the transfer on here so you guys can see it. And thank you guys all for joining me. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Be creative, and I hope we've inspired you. Thanks.